for that message. The day he wore my crown. You know, that's a great truth in the Bible. It tells us in Romans 5, 12, Wherefore, as by one man, and his name was Adam, by one man centered into the world and death by sin. And then it tells us a horrible truth. And so death passed upon all men. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Paul in the New Testament remind us where in times past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and well by nature, even as others, children of wrath. Today our choir has walked us from this purple a man asked me one time, what does that signify? It signifies the Lord of glory. It signifies the one who by his word spoke into the existence the very world in which we live. The one who without him we would not have life, nor would we have breath. But you know, as we as his creation, we've gone astray. Every man has gone astray, has turned his own way and turned their back upon God. And you know, God said, I've loved my creation because he said that it's so important to him. We sinned, we turned our back upon him, we in our ways, and, but yet he loved us. Now how then could God bring back his lost creation? Well, in the Trinity of God, somewhere back in the foundations, even before the foundations perhaps of the world, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit said, I need to redeem my creation. And Jesus said, I will, Father. There's the royalty that simplifies the love of God. The truth that perhaps everyone in here might know this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, how then, Father, said Jesus, can I bring back our creation? And God said, there's one way, the cross. And the way of the cross will lead home. It'll lead home anyone that has wandered off into the world of sin and has no hope and no assurance. But Jesus foresaw in the age of eternity this cross. And did he see the crown of thorns? The wicked Judean thorns that in the process of dying for you and for me, somewhere in Pilate's hall, they took this crown they placed it on the wretched brow of our only begotten Son of God. Then maybe with a sword or a stave or something, they jammed it down upon his head. Blood trinkled down. But you would hardly notice that trinkle of blood 
because they had taken the blessed body of our Lord and had lashed it until he was nothing but a broken, running sore. But you know something? That should be your case and mine. We're the ones that sin. We're the ones that turned away from God. We're the ones that are not interested in the very God that gave us the breath that we breathe, the life that we live, and yet we become so engrossed in living this life that we have turned away from Him. Even many that have claimed Him as Savior get involved in the world to the place to where they really don't have time for God, perhaps, or not. But I want you to know something. When he walked, struggling under the weight of the cross, up the Villa del Rosa, stumbling under the weight of the cross, could no longer be carried, but was carried by another. And up the mount on Golgotha, the place of the skull, and there they nailed him to this cross. And you know, it's just as he said. He could have called 10,000 angels to take him down from that cross, but he didn't do it. Why? Because of you and me. The love of God goes not just for the mass, but the love of God goes down to you and to me. That's why he died on the cross. It's a personal thing. The raging against him, the anger, the lashes, the vinegar and the sponge, the nails in his hands, were for a world, but they were for you and for me. So this morning, I want us just to do something a little bit different. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand and bow your heads with me. Those of you that know him, those of you that have put your trust and faith in him, I want you to take your Bible or bow your head in a word of prayer, then I'm going to ask our choir to sing an invitation time. The day he wore my crown. The day he wore my crown. Do you realize something? If you were the only person, if I was the only person, that God would have saved, he would have still died on Calvary. He would have still died with the blood streaming down and the spear thrust in the side and came forth water to blood. If you're not here and you're not saved, I will pray that while we hear this one song of invitation, that you'll let Jesus Christ come into your heart and life and save you. And if you let Jesus come into your heart and life and save you, I trust that you'll not keep that a secret, but I guess you'll walk down this aisle and confess to these that though you crucified him as others have today, He's going to be your Savior.